Hello viewers, today I'm going to attempt to repair my rear differential on my good old BMW E36. The problem which I have with my differential and the reason that I'm going to attempt to repair it is that I have some crazy amount of swag in the differential. For some reason I'm having some clicking sounds all the time and the feel is that something is going to drop down from the rear axle. This is the main reason that I'm going to repair it. Other than that I don't have any wheeling noises coming out of the rear so that's why I'm not going to change my bearings I'm just going to change probably my friction discs yeah let me remove it from the car I'm not going to film this process because it's pretty straightforward it's not something uh, really hard to do so let me remove it and we're going to continue from there So a few minutes later the differential is removed and as we can see guys from the bolts here this differential is type 188 and for the people which are wondering what is how you can understand what is the difference between type 188 and 168 is the easiest way is to count the bolts on the flanges so as we can see we have one two three and on the bottom the same so in total we have six bolts on this flange which means we are going to have a type 188 if you have four bolts you're going to have 168 so just a tip which probably everyone knows and as we can see guys actually this differential have been already rebuilt but still i want to see what's happening inside and see is there any issues so i'm not going to bother Remove the drain plug. I'm just going to remove the whole cover. Hopefully we are not going to make a big mess. So now because of the sealant, probably I'm going to need some screwdriver to open it up. I'm just going to put two of the bolts here. So if the car drops down, it's not fall on the ground. So just going to tighten up two of the bolts, few threads. Probably going to try to hammer it down. It's really tight. Started, it started to move. Yeah, I'm not recommending to do it like that, but it's my differential, so I'm going to do whatever I like. Top and top a little bit. Okay. And yeah, I have put it. I have put it. Something to catch it. Don't worry. Actually the oil doesn't look so good. Okay, now I'm going to remove the two bolts. <coughs> okay, like that. Okay, I'm going to leave this aside. And let me try to remove the flanges. Hopefully they're going to, yeah, they're going to come out, I think, pretty easy. I'm not planning to change my seals on the side, because they are not leaking for now. For now. And the other one. So yeah, I'm going to leave it to drain out fully and we're going to continue. I'm going to use some brake cleaner to accelerate the process a little bit. Okay. 
Okay guys, so before continuous disassembling the differential, I decided to measure the backwash uh, before removing everything. Yeah, this is the setup right now. I have tried with this dial gauge indicator holder, but it was impossible. So I took the good old Chinese one and it works like a charm. So as we can see, the dial gauge indicator is is touching the crown, the crown gear of the differential of the case. So now we're going to measure the backwash. I really hope the dial gauge indicator is seen on the camera because the the number is a little bit small. So let's see. So roughly how much is this? Around eight or seven? Maybe seven. So 0 0.07, which is pretty much in the beginning of the specification. Once, once again, the spec is from 0 0.06 to 0 0.14. So we are exactly at point. So it's a little bit on the tight side. Okay, let's continue. Okay, now I'm going to continue with the removal of the bolt flanges. So let's undo the six bolts. Now let's see how easy our doors are going to come out. Okay, this is the O-ring which I was talking about. So the other thing which you probably going to know by yourselves. It's really important to not mess up these shims here with the other side because actually this one has some exact thickness and if you mess them up you're going to have some issues after that. So we're going to talk about this a little bit later. So I'm just going to label them. So just going to type L for left. So to be sure that I'm not going to mess them up. No, the other one. Okay, this was much more easier. Okay. Okay, and now we should be able to remove the casing. So let me remove the rack inside. Okay. Like so. If we just take a look inside, we're just going to see the pinion gear. As we can see in our case. Oh yeah. Actually, it feels a little bit tight. Uh, so let's continue with the case. Okay, so let's put this on the side. We're not going to need this for now. And continue with this part of the differential. So now let's try to undo this. How much they were? Eight bolts which are holding this plate. Hopefully we are not going to round them up because they are really easy to be rounded. So let's try to undo all of them. Okay, let's see how it goes. Okay. Okay, two out of eight, my lucky day. So 
So, let's start removing the components and see what we have inside. Almost gone. Okay, finally. So, here is the cap. Actually, it does look so bad. So, here we should have a three washers. And I don't know. Where is the other ones? So we should we should have a three washers here. So the other one left. Mm. We're going to see. Okay, I'm going to leave them the way they were, like that. So now the bigger spider gear and the pressure plate. So, okay, I'm going to keep the orientation. This is a, let's call it pressure, pressure plate. And as we can see, it is bended. So I'm going to leave it aside. After that, it's a, the door plate. As we can see. And here are the friction discs. Which, I don't see anything bad in them. Once again, door plate, pressure plate, and this is the other pressure pressure plate. This is the bigger sp spider gear. Okay, let me organize it a little bit. So now the smaller sp spider gears. So it, they came out with the pin. Plus one more set of spider gears, smaller ones. So to leave them like that. And once again, bigger spider gear, as you can see. And we should have, I believe, four more. Two more sets of plate. So this is the other pressure plate. So as we can see, we have two more sets of dog plates with friction discs. Plus the pressure plate. And what else? Yeah, this is the other, this is the other, let's call it a spring washer. So it's supposed to go like that, with the pointing to the downwards. Actually the pressure plates are looking pretty spotless. They are looking pretty good fine to be honest. I was expecting something. Bet. So this is the other one. So it has just a small amount of scarfing, but nothing crazy, guys. It's like a, it's really clear, and I don't feel with finger anything abrasive or some, anything like that. It feels pretty good. So I'm not exactly sure what is the issue with my differential, why it's making these noises, but doesn't matter. I have bought several things from racing diffs, as you can see here, 
And I have opened up the differential and I'm not planning to close it up as the way it is right now. So I'm going to open up everything from racing divs. And I'm going to start installing the things which they have provided. So yeah guys, I, I didn't tell in the beginning but my differential has four sets of coach plates. So this means I have four dog plates and four friction discs. So yeah, this differential was with a really big work percentage. Uh, and now my idea is because I not I'm not exactly sure what the builder have done. Now I'm going to clean up everything, I'm going to decrease it and I'm going to put it back inside in the case and I'm going to measure how much space we have from the from the top to the end of the case. So to determine what I'm going to need to do, so to install the racing divs sets, friction discs and the plates. Okay, so a little bit of information which I have and I know is that the depth of the case should be roughly 96.8 but in my case let me show you I have 104 somewhere around that let me redo it so yeah 104.5 millimeters which is much more than the spec which I know uh, and actually there is some difference in the cases I know that there is a difference between the diesel ones and the petrol ones. By diesel ones I mean I'm not 100% sure but numbers which are around 2.8 and below or 2.9 and below are for diesel engines and the 2.9 and up is for the petrol engines. So I believe this is why I have this spacer here. So let me show you. This spacer between the crown gear and the keys. So this spacer here, no all of the cases have this, so I have it in my in my case, so yeah. The other thing which is not the same as most of the type 188 is my cup and cup. Most of the time the space between the end of the cup and the flange should be roughly 14.1 millimeters. But in my case, once again, it's not like that. Around 17 millimeters, which is much more from the others. But we need to take in mind that originally this cap was 21 millimeters. You're going to ask yourself self why. The reason is once again because I have four pairs of coach packs and to be able to make a room for the fourth coach pack you're going to need to remove four millimeters from this cap so originally this cap was four millimeters higher and because the previous differential builder wanted to make room for this fourth pair of coach pack he removed four millimeters of the height of this cap so originally this cap was 21 millimeters and on the petrol cases, once again the higher ratio cases, differential cases, uh, this cap is 14 millimeters. Once again 21 minus 7 millimeters once again because of this, you're going to get 14 millimeters of height. And if you want to put a fourth coach pack, you're going to remove from 40 millimeters, 4 millimeters, and you're going to end up with 10 millimeters cap for a Petro case, LSD case. Hopefully this makes some sense to you guys. Hopefully. Uh, so something that I forgot to remove from the case. As we saw on my cap, I have this strange washer, which I think is supposed to be something like the oil washer which originally most of you going to have and most of the time this one is going to break down but I was kind of surprised that mine is not there at all and it's not break down but I think someone have done this by themselves because it doesn't look OEM let me show you <clears throat> so if we take a closer look okay. 
So if we take a closer look, we're going to see that this is someone have done this by hand. So it's not original one for sure. Someone have done this, especially by these cuttings here. So it's a self-made thing, especially here, the fabrication. And as I told you, we're supposed to have three washers. So this is the thinner washer. After that, we should have a spring washer, which should be something like this. Like this one, but in smaller diameter to match the dishwasher and the oil washer, which I guess it should be this. Uh, and here we are missing the spring washer and actually we should have the same three washers in the case. So let me remove it. So once again, the same washer and the smaller, the thinner washer. And still, once again, I don't have a spring washer inside, which I'm not sure why. Probably the previous builder have made this oil washer a little bit thicker, and that's why he decided to remove the spring washer. I am not 100% sure. Uh, but now the thing which I'm going to do is to put everything back together without these two spring washers, without these two ones. And to measure how much clearance am I going to have when everything is assembled. This is crucial because uh, if you don't have the right amount of clearance, you're going to have some issues with your differential. So let me put back everything together. Yeah, I'm going to clean up everything. I'm going to de de degrease it. I'm going to put it back together. So to be able to measure how much clearance I'm going to be left with. With this setup right now. After that we're going to do the same of course with the racing diff friction plates and dock plates uh, but first I want to see how much is right now with everything assembled how it was supposed to be before so I think I found the issue uh, everything is back together assembled without the two spring washers the main spring washers or I think I, they call them pre-walled washers so let me show you how much clearance we have with everything assemble, assembled once again without these two spring pre wad washers. So let me show you. I'm just measuring the depth. How much room we have left with. Oops. I'm going to measure it in uh, several places. So we have around 20 millimeters, 0.6 clearance between everything inside and the top of the casing. So I'm going to write it on, write it down. And now I'm going to measure the thickness of the both pre -wall washers. So one of it is just a second around 2.43. We can measure it together. Yeah, around 4.8, let's say. And the last thing which we need to take in mind is the height of the cup once again. So as I told you on the petrol cases it should be roughly 14.1 but in our case because the casing is from diesel engine we have totally different cup. So let me measure it. So I'm just going to do it like that. So roughly 7.1, let's say. Okay, so to simplify things, the depth of the case is 20.6, the pre-wall washers 4.8 and the cup 7.1. So if we add the washers and the cup, 
we're going to have in total 21.9 millimeters and if we remove this height from the casing we're going to see that we we're going to need 1.3 millimeters more space to put everything back together and actually we're going to add to this 1.3 like that plus 0.1 to 0.4 millimeters so we're going to need at least from 0.1 to 0.4 millimeters of clearance between all the things inside the casing so we're going to have uh, we're going to want around 1.5 millimeters more so to be able to do that the easiest thing to do of course is to remove some material from this cup which is going to be the easiest thing which we can do still i'm measuring this with the old coach packs i am still didn't open the racing diff things because uh, as i told you we, ho we have in total here three coach packs here we have four coach packs i'm just going to remove one of the coach packs uh, and then we're going to have four mi millimeters more room so it's going to have even more than needed but still i don't have the right shims here so i believe this is the original shim which goes here but this shim the oil shim which is supposed to be here for sure is not supposed to look like that and especially i'm missing the pre-watch shim which is between these two shims so yeah i believe this was the issue with this dif differential the clearance between everything we should have around 1.5 millimeters more room inside so to be able this differential to be functional right uh, and we don't have it i'm not sure how this differential even worked but i have drive this probably a few thousand kilometers like that so as i told you guys i'm going to change my coach packs i have bought a set from LSD coach plates from racing gifts as we can see here they are all inside i'm going to show you to you guys two words about the oil shims this is self-made oil shim from the previous div builder and i have decided to buy a brand new ones which are looking like the oem ones yeah one not 100 percent the same i bought them from let me show you where they were the uh, bwm boomer tuner tune or something like that beamer tune so yeah i bought them from there and actually they are not the cheapest thing in the world i believe i paid for both of them around 50 euro and i even don't count the i even do, don't count the shipping so yeah they are not the cheapest thing in the world but yeah everything for these differentials are not cheap like the coach packs and everything else is pretty expensive so why i'm talking about all of these millimeters heights and everything else it's really important to check what is what is going to be the end clearance of your differential once again let me make let me show you my quick math so once again 104 is the total depth let me show you once again so let me zero up my digital caliper and i'm going to measure the total depth of the case once again hopefully you guys are seeing and as we can see it roughly 104 millimeters if i take a little bit more detailed measurement probably i'm going to go to 104 so this is the total amount of depth of this differential casing so from this we're going to need to, to, sub, to subtract the height of this differential cup which once again was 17 yeah everything is in millimeters like that the other thing which we need which we're going to need to subtract is the thickness of these spacers these spring spacers which once again we have two of them which we're going to use subtract once again mi minus five millimeters 
And the other thing, which of course we're going to need to subtract, is the total amount of thickness of everything here. So let me unpack the coach pack from Racing Gifts. We're going to every, we're going to assemble everything, and I'm going to show you what is the total thickness of everything. And something else interesting which I found in the differential. Uh, most of the time, when you remove everything, you're going to find out that you're going to have three, three shims in on every each side on the bottom and on the top. In my case, I had only two shims. This thinner shim, which is exactly 0.7 millimeters, right here, and this oil shim, which was I believe two millimeters, exactly two millimeters. So I had these two shims only, but in the perfect scenario, you're going to want to have one more shim, which is this one here, which is two millimeters. So I managed to find these shims uh, from one of my colleagues, which sent me actually this original shim, which I'm going to talk about a little bit about this later, but in the perfect case, you're going to have a three shims, thicker one, Little little spring shim like here and oil shim, which are supposed to sit here in the cup. The thicker shim, the spring shim, and the oil shim like that. The same comes for the bottom of the casing. They should be installed the same way like here. But in my case, I had only two of them. Not sure why the previous builder decided to, to make it like that. Uh, but probably I'm going to use only the thinner shim once again plus the oil shim which I bought from Beamer Tune. So I'm once again I'm not going to be able to use the thicker shim because I'm probably not going to have enough space but nothing I can do about. So let's see what we have in the pack. Once again I bought this from Racing Diffs. I believe they were from Serbia if I don't guessing wrong. So yes yeah, some stickers from Racing Gifts Deep Coop and see yeah, some fast star rating probably we're going to give them later so yeah he, here is some I'm going to talk about a little bit about this after a second yeah about this so let's open up let's open up the coach packs So in total we're going to have three coach packs here. Uh, they are sending brand new dog plates. Actually, oh they are sending us uh, new spring washers. I didn't know about this. Uh, but yeah, this is going to probably came in handy. Let's see what is the thickness of them. As we remember, the original ones were 2.5. Yeah, this is a little bit thinner actually. This is 2.4. So a little bit thinner, or I'm not measuring right. Okay, so uh, roughly 2.56, something like that. I'm going to see, am I going to use the uh, provide from Racing Gifts spring washers? I'm going to see, I'm not sure about it. I'm going to leave it aside for now. So, as we can see, this is the dog plates, the three of them. And this is the three coach plates, which are look, uh, looking totally different from ours, which was previously. But uh, once again, the previous ones which were installed is not the original ones, so yeah, they are looking totally different than uh, these ones. No doubt about it. Not sure what is the difference, but uh, I'm just going to check uh, the difference in thickness. For now it looks pretty different, but let me check. So this one is roughly 2 millimeters, and this one's... Yeah, probably it's possible just to have some small amount of wear, not sure, but pro uh, most of the time this should be 2 millimeters. I believe the original ones should be exactly 2 millimeters, plus 
the dog plates, which should be once again two millimeters. Yeah, this is pretty much two. Let me see the other ones, the original ones. Yeah, pretty pretty close. Uh, once again, yeah, it's pretty identical. Just the coach plates are a little bit thicker with 0.1, 0.15 millimeters thicker. And if we add, add this on the three coach packs, it's roughly half of a millimeter, which is a lot actually. But if we measure everything together, top. We have roughly 13 millimeters and let's see how much we're going to have with three coach packs of my old setup. So three coach packs once again. Let's see how much we're going to have. Maybe one a millimeter. So this is a lot actually. Okay. Let me sort them like I measured the other ones. So yeah, exactly one millimeter of difference, which is a lot, roughly one millimeter. So now I'm going to try something. I'm going to put them like that. They are kind of fresh and kind of hard to go inside the bigger spider gear. The old ones are getting inside much more easier. Uh, about the fourth coach pack which we are, we are not going to use I have found out uh, the original spacer which uh, BMW differential have, which should be exactly 4 millimeters, which most of the people are removing. So to be able to install a fourth coach pack, but as we saw, I have four, four of them, which means I, uh, the previous div builder have removed this spacer, but I have found it once again. So I'm going to add it uh, because I'm going to use only three coach packs now. So it's probably actually. This spacer, I'm thinking to install it like that. This is a spring washer, which should be installed like that. And after that, I'm going to install the four millimeter spacer. Uh, because uh, this is the original way BMW is installing the spacer, so I decided to install it like that. But uh, just for measuring purposes, I'm going to install it like that. And now the idea is to measure all of this package together with a digital caliper and to see what is the going to be the thickness of everything. So let's see. No suppose we'll prevent some the same online. Uh how much eighty two point eight I'm gonna look the word choose the word just now. We're going to try once again one, one more side to qualify yeah, 82.8 okay let's write up this so we have subtract the thickness of the cup the thickness of the both spring washers and now i'm going to write up 82.8 which is the total thickness of all of everything. Give me a second to take the, the calculator and see what is the result. So, this is the result. 
We don't have enough space to fit everything inside the case. Uh, and actually the original specification for free play in the casing should be from 0.1 to 0.4 millimeters. But I know that uh, mo most of the people are going from 0.1 to 1 millimeter. So this is the range which is a good idea to have. Uh, but yeah, we are far away from there because right right now we we are not going to be able to even fit everything inside because we have 0.8 millimeters less room inside. So in perfect case scenario, we're going to need to add around 1.5 millimeters more room somehow. So let me figure out something and we're going to see how we're going to do it. So okay guys, after some time, once again, uh, I have decided how I'm going to manage to do my free play inside the casing of the LSD. Uh, but before that, let me show you this high-tech diagram which I have drawn up. So sorry about my drawing skills, but this is what we have. So this is the casing of the LSD once again. And as I told you, the total height of the case is 104 millimeters from the cup to the end of the casing. So uh, we don't have this actually. So from once again from the end of the cup to the end of the casing we have 104 millimeters. So once again the cup is exactly 17 millimeters high and from this we're going to do our measurements and our end result of our end play. Something else which I take in mind that most of the people and actually not most of the uh, most of them but all of them which are doing prof professionally this rebuilding differentials was not able to give me an answer for it is the measurement from this point to this point and this thing is exactly and this thing actually is where the spider gears gears the bigger spider gears are hitting the casing so so they are sitting like that and uh, let me show you and this part this portion here <coughs> there are here is sitting the dog plates not actually the dog plates but uh, the bigger diameter of the whole casing so the smaller diameter here is where the bigger spider gears are located and underneath there we have this shims here which are sitting here once again we have one smaller shim and one oil shim so it should be something like that so I have talked with several places where they are rebuilding differentials but none of them was able to give me a conclusive answer what should be the free play here on the smaller diameter on the cup and on the end of the LSD casing so none of them does matter which I have asked for uh, racing divs or I have asked the people which sent, sent me these oil shims right here they was not able to give me an answer how much should be the end play of this at uh, the free play sorry but um, in my mind i think that the free play on the smaller diameter should be bigger than the free play on the bigger diameter because if you have smaller diameter a smaller free play on the smaller diameter here this is going to prevent the the whole unit to expand because the bigger spider gears are going to hit here and uh, this is not going to give the spider the spider points the spider gears to expand enough and to make enough friction in the friction discs and the dog plates so that's why i believe the free play here should be bigger because if you have smaller play in the bigger diameter you're going to have enough room to expand as much as possible all the friction discs and the dog plates and you're going to make a much better friction then and not sure why they can give me that answer is this right or wrong but uh, I think this is much more logical approach that's why I decided to make bigger free play on the smaller diameter once again and smaller free play on the bigger diameter so let me show you how I have managed to do this by measuring everything and I'm going to show you what is my free play on the bigger and on the smaller diameter as we saw previously I needed one more millimeter in the casing so I decided rather than removing one millimeter from the cup 
to remove one millimeter from the shim which was originally installed from BMW on the, uh, on the bottom of everything. But uh, because I was lucky enough to find a workshop with a Wate, which doesn't know how to work with it, they made it 2.8 actually, but after that I made it 2.5 because racing divs have sent me this 0.5 millimeter washer, let's say. And together both of them are making exactly 3 millimeters, like that. Is that I think? Yeah, exactly 3 millimeters. So this is going to give me exactly 1 millimeter, which I was needing. So to be able to match up everything inside and to not uh, block it. Because I didn't have exactly 1 millimeter enough room so to fit everything inside. But uh, after thinking about it, for a really long period of time, I came to the conclusion that still this is not a good idea because on the bottom I'm going to install this spacer washer plus this shim which is exactly 0.5 mm, so both of them are exactly 3 mm, plus one uh, friction disc and one bow plate. So if we combine everything, we're going to see that we have 7.3 millimeters, which is going to go on the bottom. And on the top, we're going to have two friction discs and two dog plates. So it's going to be like that. And if I measure this, I have 8.4 millimeters. So roughly one millimeter more than the bottom one. And the thing that I have discovered is that if I style the bigger spider gear with this set like that we're going to quickly see that the end of the spider gear is going to be seen one millimeter less which is going to make a little bit less room underneath in the casing so I believe it's a much better way to do this is if we have exactly the same height on the both sides on the bottom and on the top of the casing. So I'm going to try to do close as much close as possible the same height of these pressure plates and uh, the friction discs. By that if I use the method which I was thinking that I'm going to use uh, like that, I'm not going to manage to do it. And because I don't have a fourth, um, fourth pair, four pair of uh, friction discs and dog plates, I'm going to remove this, which we have machined to three millimeters plus the spacer washer, which Racing Gives provided. I'm just going to put one of uh, two of the old dog plates, which are exactly four millimeters, which is the exact height of the original spacer which uh, BMW have provided. So exactly 4 mm. So if you match up this, if we pair them up like that, we're going to have pretty much the same height of the both packages like that. So once again, as I told you, I believe it's more important that the same part of the sp bigger spider gear should be the same length on the both sides, not like now, right now. So, if we remove this here and we add the both dog plates from the old, old friction packages, we're going to make this happen. So we're going to have the, have the same visible height on the both spider gears, on the both sides, on the bottom and on the top. I believe this is more important than making the height of the whole package exact number. I believe this should be more close to each other on the both sides and uh, by that I decided in the end of the day to reduce the height of this cup. So as we remember guys, this was exactly 17 millimeters and right now, let me see how much it is, 16.4. So I have removed 0.6 millimeters from this cup. Still. Inside the small diameter is not touched. I have removed only, only material from the cup. Once again, 0.6 millimeters. 
so to be able to fit everything inside and to have the desired free play inside everything and now I'm going to show you my mat uh, but before that let me show you something I'm going to measure what is the height from the bigger from one end of the spider gear to the other end of the bigger spider gear just to show you how I, I have calculated how much should be the free play on the smaller diameter so somewhere around that so this is the height from one tenth of the spider gear bigger spider gear to the other end okay I found out that I have made a small mistake this 104 millimeters is from the bottom of the casing on the bigger diameter to the end of the casing not on the cup so from the bottom to the top of the casing here is 104 millimeters my mistake so to know what is the height from the on the smaller diameter from here to here we're going to need the whole diam the whole height which is 104 plus the boat 6.3 millimeters which I have measured previously by that I mean the depth from from this surface to this surface is exactly 6.3 millimeters if this is 70 millimeters but doesn't matter uh, I have measured it like that now it's not going to be changed so 6.3 millimeters inside here is the same the protrusion is 6.3 millimeters from the bigger diameter to the smaller so I have added two times 6.3 millimeters and I have removed 70 millimeters from the cup and we're going to end up with 99.6 millimeters is the total height on the smaller diameter from here to the end of the cup on the smaller diameter here and if we measure I don't know did I show you what uh, give me a second about this 5.1 millimeter which I have right up there this is the height of the smaller shim plus the oil shim so roughly 2.55 millimeters so if we multiply by 2 we're going to have exactly 5.1 millimeters and if we add the boat heights we're going to have 98.7 millimeters okay I don't remember where, where I ended up but once again the clearance on the smaller diameter is 0.9 millimeters from our measurements and the clearance that I'm going to aim for on the bigger diameter where the cups sits is going to, the clearance that I'm going to aim for is going to be somewhere around 0.5 to 0.6 I'm going to aim for this I know some people are going much higher numbers like 1 millimeters or 1.5 millimeter even but uh, I decided to go with a little bit lower clearance because during the life span of this friction discs they are going to wear out and this is going to increase the clearance for sure that's why I'm going to go with smaller clearance because during uh, usage this is going to decrease in height for sure and uh, I guess I'm going to end up with millimeter or more of clearance so that's why I'm going to aim for somewhere around 0.5 millimeters we have exactly 104 millimeters of height on the case from this width let me let me write here minus 17 uh, oops 16.4 this is the height of the cup we should remove the five millimeters from the boat uh, preload springs which are these ones which once again is exactly 2.5 millimeters each of them so in total both of them are five millimeters and from this we need to remove the total height of everything inside so let, let me put them all in one and uh, we're going to see what is the total height of everything okay I have put everything that we're going to use the pressure plates the spider the spider gears and everything else on the both sides we have on on the left side we have two pairs of friction discs and dog plates on the right side we have one pair of friction discs and dog plates plus two more dog plates which going to replace once again the spacer which I was planning to use in the beginning so let's measure everything so 
So roughly 82 points. We think 82.3. So let's put that in the equation. So 82.3 millimeters. And let's see what clearance we're going to get when we subtract everything from 104. It's not great. Minus 16.4, minus 5, minus 82.3. So we're going to get exactly 0.3 millimeters of clearance on the bigger diameter, which means we're going to have 0.6 millimeter less on the from the smaller diameter. Okay, I got the stirp. Once again, we're going to have less clearance on the bigger diameter than the smaller diameter. Once again, because during the lifespan of these friction discs, we're going to increase our clearance because of the wear of the friction discs once again. And if we exceed this clearance here on the smaller diameter, this is going to reduce the movement of the pressure plates, which are moving like that on the ramps. And if we have smaller clearance on the spider gears, this is going to prevent the pressure plates to move um, up and down like that. That's why I'm going for less clearance on the bigger diameter, which goes in the case. So now, pretty much this is the mat. I know it's a little bit confusing, but uh, if you take your time, you're going to understand what I'm talking about. So let me clean up everything and I'm going to look everything once again and we're going to start assembling it back together and hopefully we won't see it going to work in the car okay something else that i want to po point out i'm going to assemble briefly everything so i'm going to put the smaller washer which is 0.7 millimeters and the oil washer which right now i don't remember did i say but uh, right now this is 1.8 millimeters previously was 2.2 so I have reduced the height with uh, 0.4 millimeters on the both of them. So I'm going to place them inside the case like that. And I'm going to fit everything except the preload springs. So once again, four millimeters, which is going to be the replacement of the original spacer. After that, the dog plate. After that, one friction disc pressure plate the bigger spider gear after that the smaller spider gears you need to make sure that the spider gears are sitting good on the bigger spider gear because this can give you some false readings after that the other bigger spider gear the other pressure plate now the both pairs of the friction discs dog plate friction disc and once again dog plate so now this is the other way how to measure how much uh, room you're going to left with when everything is assembled maybe this is going to be a little bit easier to measure than everything assembled as i, as I showed you that i have measured 82.3 so right now we have roughly let's say 20 millimeters and if we do the math with uh, 60.4 millimeters which is the height of the cup plus 5 millimeters we're going to end up with 21.4 which means we are not going to be able to fit everything but this is happening because if we take a closer look, let me show you. Underneath here. Yeah. Here we're going to see that this is the oil shim which we have installed previously on the smaller diameter of the casing. And right now the bigger spider gear, which is this one is sitting over the oil shim because right now we haven't installed the spring washer and if we install the spring washer yes then this 
bigger spider gear is not going to lay down on the oil shim. So this can give us some wrong readings, but uh, is but it is much more easier when you remove the oil shims and the smaller washer and then to measure this. And uh, we're going to see that we don't came with uh, pretty much the same clearance. Just wanted to point it out see if some of you are struggling with this. It's better to remove the both washers underneath, then reassemble everything inside except the both spring washers, and then measure what is the depth like that. Like that, and we're going to see, and we're going to do the same map. This is the other way how to do it if you prefer to do it like that. But once again, you're going to need to remove the smaller washers underneath. The other thing which is really important, when you first try to assemble everything inside with the spring washers and the pressure plate and you tighten up several bolts on the, on the pressure plate, you need to check down once again the oil shim underneath right here. Is it moving freely? If everything is okay, you're going to be able to move this oil shim freely without any issues. If it's dragging a lot and if it if it's blocked, probably you're doing something wrong. So now, once again, I'm going to clean up everything, and I'm going to take the I'm going to take the oil, and we're going to assemble, hopefully everything for the last time, and hopefully I, finally I'm going to have a LSD on my car because I'm tired of driving with open differential. It really sucks. So give me several minutes to clean everything as good as I can and continue with this. So I, I cleaned up everything as good as I could, hopefully it's good enough. Uh, the thing that I want to say a few words, I have cleaned up all the threads for the bolts which is holding the cup. And I have bought a brand new bolts which are once again 10.9 stiffness of the bolt. So it's a good quality bolt which I just shortened up to, I believe this was exactly, let me see, 8.8 by 1. So yeah, this is 8 millimeter bolt and the thread is 1 uh, by 1 and I have cut them to roughly 16 millimeters but I believe you can make them 20 millimeters but uh, yeah, I have made a little bit mistake but you can go with little bit longer bolts to 20 millimeters but I just go with 16 which does matter. Uh, so now I'm going to use this oil 75 W140 uh, Moto Oil, which is a blue one, for lubing up everything. So I'm going to put a little bit here, like that. After that, of course, I'm going to fill up the differential with the same oil. So let's start assembling little by little. Of course we're going to start with the smaller shim with the with the thinner shim which is as, as I told you 7 mm 0.7 millimeters. I'm just going to put it in the loop. Uh, yes, this is not so much essential for this shims underneath there, but still I'm going to put oil in them. Yeah, the oil shim probably is a good idea to have oil, but the smaller one, the thinner one, is not essential. So, like so, after that I'm going to continue with the bot dock plates, which is once again going to replace the original spacer from BMW installed underneath, which should be exactly 4, four millimeters, uh, but as I showed you guys, I have reduced the height of this spacer to 2.5 millimeters, so because I don't have one more spacer like that, I'm going to use just the two dock plates which I'm going to place underneath everything, like the original differential it is. Uh, like that actually, let me try not to put some oil in the threads. I'm going to be a little bit more careful. Like that. After that is the spring washer. 
which is going to be over the dock plates. Like that, and, and yeah, the, the spring washer should go like that. Uh, the smaller diameter should face bot should be facing the bottom part of the casing, so it should be installed like that. So let's now install the the dock plate, which is provided from the race from racing diffs, which is in the kit itself. So yeah. Like that, after that, yeah, the most important thing is to lube up the friction discs as good as possible. Because if you don't lube them good, it's possible to cook them up when you start up your car and start driving it. So, okay, this is the first pair of the friction discs. Now, it's the pressure plate, uh, which let me try to lube it up. Yeah, the most importantly, it should be inside here, where the spider gears are rotating. Like so. After that is the bigger spider gear. Okay, I guess I'm going to need a little bit more fluid. Okay, like so. Now it's important to be sure that the spider gear is engaging good in the friction disc because the newer friction discs are a little bit it has a little bit tighter teeth so it's possible to not uh, make a, to engage fully the spider gear inside so take note about this you need to be sure that you have engaged and completely the spider gear inside the frictional discs so now we're going to install the smaller spider gears and if you haven't engaged the spider gear, the bigger spider gear, good enough in the friction disc, you're going to have some issues installing the small spider gears. They're not going to lie so so good in the bigger spider gear. So this is going to give you some indication that you have made something wrong. So the other two spider gears. It's kind of messy, but it's good to be looped as good as possible. Like that. So now the other spider gear, the bigger one. So like that. Now the other pressure plate. <coughs> I don't know how many times I have assembled and disassembled this LSD casing, but it sure it was a lot. So I really hope this is the last time. So now we're going to continue with the other two pairs of friction discs. The dog plate. And this is going to be the last friction disc. Like that. So plenty of oil there. Like that. And lastly, the spring washer, the upper spring washer, once again. 
This spring washer should be installed like that with the with the other diameter pointing upwards. So like so. And okay now the only thing that's left is the is the differential cup for which I'm going to loop up once again the smaller shim and the oil shim like so I'm going to place it like that and now I'm just going to put a little bit of oil here for easier installation and of course here So now we're going to try to hold this shim like that until we installed the cup so to be sure that the shims are not going to fall down and we need to aim the cup with the bolt holes of course. Okay. I'm going to use the hammer And now we can start installing the bolts. Okay, so now I'm going to use the bolts to tighten up the cup on the top of the casing. So I'm going to put a little bit of thread locker on the bolts. I believe the original ones had thread locker too, so I guess a good idea to put on thread locker. Like that. Actually, you can tighten up this cup only with two bolts. So, I guess if you tighten up all the bolts without thread locker, it's not going anywhere. Now I'm going to tighten up all the bolts too. Some four are saying 32, some four are saying 35. Racing diffs are saying 40 Nm. So yeah, I'm going to try with 40. I'm going to see how it feels like. Uh, but if it feels too stretchy, I'm going to go with 35. So let's give it a try. So yeah, 40 seems just about right. So now I'm going to loop up, loop up as good as possible the bearings on the top and on the bottom of course but before that let me show you the oil washer underneath how it moves. So let me see, am I going to be able to show you? Yeah, I believe you're going to see it. But as we can see I'm able to move it. It has just a small drag. I can feel it. Just smaller. Yeah, if you have a spring washer there, it's going to be a little bit more tighter. But uh, I was not able to find a spring washer underneath the oil washer, so it's a little bit freely than I wanted to be. But I believe it's not going to cause any issues. But um, if it's stuck there pretty bad, probably something is wrong with your assembly. So I have cleaned up as good as I could the internals inside the cover, the housing. Plus the bot bearing ledges, let's say, the Excel cups which are going here. Once again, I have marked which one is right and which one is left, which is really important. Uh, because I have measured my backwash between the pinion gear and the crown gear, and I have seen that is right in spec, I'm not planning of changing these spacers which have exact thickness 
most of the time you're going to have a different thickness between the left and the right one and if I had some issue with the backwash I have bought this from Racing Diffs once again which is a kit with these spacers they are going from 1 mm to 0.1 after that to 0.1 0.2 and so on so to be able to adjust your backwash as precise as possible uh, but as we saw earlier in the video I have my backwash exactly in spec so I'm not planning of using these spacers exact spacers for redoing my backwash so that's why I'm not planning to open them and use them I'm just going to leave it aside for now uh, but pretty much this is the idea if you have issues with your backwash you're going to need to change your spacer with smaller or bigger if you need to move your LSD case to the left you're going to need to install a thinner washer on the right and thicker washer on the left and vice versa if you need to move it to the right you're going to need to install a thinner washer on the left and thicker on the right but for that you're going to need a set of different different thickness with these washers most of you guys probably not going to have them uh, and I didn't have them too that's why I decided to buy it from racing diffs but once again because I'm not going to need it for now I'm going to leave it aside and so I'm not going to use them because right now everything seems fine hopefully of course so yeah that's why I'm just going to put some silicone grease on the o-ring here so to not have any oil leaks and let me put them on the side here I have cleaned them as good as possible of course so uh, how it was it was like that this is the upper part of the differential this is the front of course and it like that so for you guys to be able to see so now I'm going to try to put the casing inside okay so let's install it it should go like that like so and now I'm going to try to install the first XL cap so this means I'm going to take the okay I'm going to start with the right one so let me put a little bit of silicone grease like so I have put as much as possible oil on the bearings but I'm going to put actually let me put a little bit silicone grease here it should be fine like that okay so let me try to aim it okay I have some hard time installing the first XL cap I'm going to try to do it like that Just put two bolts so to be sure that it's not going anywhere. Uh, actually, you're going to need to put some thread locker on these bolts because if you don't put there a thread locker, you're going to have some oil leak from here because uh, the threads are hollow and uh, you're going to have some issues with oil leaks after that. But for now, I'm just going to hold them so to be sure that it's not going anywhere. Okay, like that. So let's continue with the other side. So this is the left one.
like so and now let's start tighten, tightening up these bolts actually the torque spec for these bolts is a little bit annoying but this is what uh, I have found out roughly 13 or 14 Newton meters plus 40 degrees so kind of annoying but nothing that I can do about it so So 13 Newton meters. Okay, I believe I can manage to do it like that. So 40 degrees. Uh, this side is ready, now I'm going to repeat the same on the other side and we're going to continue from there. Okay, after assembling the EXO caps, now we're going to continue with the aluminium cover, which is on the top of course. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to use the good old silicone, there is no gasket there. So I have cleaned up as good as possible the both surfaces on the housing of the differential and here of course so I'm going to put a little bit of silicone so to reduce the chance of leaking of course like that Maybe I'll put a little bit more than needed, but not big of a deal. At least I'm going to be sure that it's not going to leak. So like that. Now it's pretty easy to know how to install it. As we can see, we have a curve here and differential has a curve here. So you cannot mess this up. So let me try to aim it. Like so. And now, these bolts, the, how, the cover bolts doesn't need thread walker. So I'm just going to place them. The bolt which is holding the plate for the differential is 3.25. I'm going to where to install it. Maybe here is going to be a better place. Yeah, here looks better. So like that. So the longer bolts are pretty obvious where it goes. You cannot mess this up. And the only torque spec which I found for the bolts of the cover is, I believe it was 46 Newton meters, something like that. I'm going to torque them to 50, so it's not the end of the world. Just to be on the safe side, I'm pretty sure that 50 Newton meters is not going to cause any issues. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, I'm going to place it like that. So it'll be easier for torquing. You guys are seeing that it's getting late. So the last thing that it left is to install the both CVXL joints, let's say. Okay, let me get a small hit. That. And on the other side, yeah, I have cleaned them up, of course. So. Clip is getting stuck. Okay. And I ah, guess this is it. Okay, so for those of you that are wondering why, what is the difference in weight between the open diff and the LSD, the limited slip differential diff differential. Let's see. So now I'm going to put the open differential and see what is the weight of it. So you guys think thirty thirty five point one kilo. So let's now put the limited slip differential and yes it is just to note I have put it oil in the differential so the both differentials have oil inside so as we can see 36.8 so exactly 1.7 kilos heavier than the open differential. So I decided to film finally the end of the video. Uh, I have been driving the car, I don't know how long, but uh, for sure it's more than half a year. So probably seven or eight months after the last footage that you guys saw uh, about the changing of the friction discs and measuring everything else. Uh, so yeah, I have drive the car a lot since then and I can tell for sure that my differential feels perfect I don't have any more issues with clunking or any kind of strange sounds and for sure right now the differentials feels much better it looks much more better than before I don't know probably the friction discs from the previous builder were it's not the best quality that you can find for sure I can feel much more improvement in handling and the feel of the rear the difference is from night and day. I don't have any more this feeling that my rear is going to fall down. So I am really pleased of my results and especially the quality of the friction discs which I bought from Diff Racings. Yeah, I believe they were Diff Racings. So yeah, I just want to say a few words that everything is fine, the differential works perfect and uh, yeah, you can apply all this strange information which I provided in the video on your differential and it's going to work. So yeah guys, I'm going to end up the video here. Thank you for watching. I know there are not a lot of people which stayed to this point because this video is really long. But if there are at least several of you, thank you for watching, especially to you guys. And see you in the next video.